Jabril in it too, ain't he? Yeah. Scoot your ass in here. I mean, you can fuck Mark in. Hey, hey. Y'all scoot over. Scoot over. Get into the light. Because he in the shadow. I mean, I got another one in there, but you don't. You was there when that nigga got that fuck card in there, that shit, bro. Oh, my God. Maybe like two times away. Alright, I'm ready. Do whatever y'all doing. Not serious, G. Trey Flowers, co-founder of Moto Vibes, <laughs> uh, record label production company, um, beat maker, producer, occasional DJ. Um, I just like making good sounding shit, and we here talking about the Linux system. Yeah. None well, of those over Jabril there. Jabril just went over there, and all of those were closed. If y'all can find some, I'll order something. That's weird. I made, bro. I'm sorry. It's Saturday, bro. It's Saturday at 12. I'll look something they're up. They're closed. All of a sudden. Clean those up eventually. Yeah, yeah that nigga, I'm looking. Girl, you know you missing out. Come fuck with me. Limit System, the hardest album to ever drop. Especially Come for Rain, bro. Me. Nah, don't tell me this. Come fuck with me. Coming out party, no homo. This is this is the one. So I got no look. How it look, G? Like you always do. Yeah. Pussy, right? Yup. All right, let me take this jacket. I ain't let me take this shit off, then man. Take this off. Let me show some motherfucker looking kind of skinny, nigga. Motherfucker looking kind of skinny, dog. And what that tattoo mean, G? Huh? What's that mean on your arm? This right here? Fruit Town Power Root? No, boy. <laughs> uh, initially, I started producing it's your boy. <laughs> seriously when I was about 18 years old. Um, yeah, right after I graduated high school, I started taking it seriously. Um, but I had a background in music from the time I was probably about 11 years old. I had my first keyboard and I started playing around with production around that age, but it's my passion. It just drives it. Um, you can't live life without music. Well, at least I can't live life without music. So I just like creating stuff that I love hearing and then maybe there's people out there like me that will, you know, enjoy it just as much as I do, so. Yeah. Shit, how the fuck did I say it the first time? They just spend a hard on that bitch. <laughs> straightforward answer just because I enjoy too many people out here right now I draw inspiration from people who are new people who are legends in the game and people who are still working just like me to 
even get your foot into the door. So, I don't know. That's a, that's a real hard question right there. No, I'm drinking from the bottle, trying to keep you up my mind. But the time I was away, things was getting fine. But I know I'm missing something. Left my Bible in Virginia, I'm all the way to California. And one thing that I remember is that, Lord, 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 I need you. Without your light, can you show me what I'm gonna do? Over again, we doing first verse, second first verse. One. Yeah. Let's get it, boy. Driving penalties in the desert, driving beamers through the snow. Uh, yeah, uh, the initially it was just boys. Just boys is like, yeah, God level with a lot of things. We're talking about ear for samples and turning samples into melodies, and then just his drum presence is ridiculous to me as well. So, um, just hearing the way he decided to pick samples, chop them up, and arrange them was a big deal to me and it made me want to pick up an MPC or get something that could at least format music the same way or I could do the same things. So yeah, I'll say he was probably the biggest inspiration there. Him and my dad, but people don't know too much about my pops right now. <laughs> we we gonna get him out there on the next album. Yeah, we about to I'm about to bring Bernie Up Lowers out out of retirement. <laughs> Burning palm trees in the desert, driving beamers through the snow. I've been. I forgot the verse, G. You just want to punch it in? <laughs> Maybe you just want to punch it in this part. I this is the part we need to be punched in. I don't know. But I didn't keep you up my mind. But the time I was away, now everything was getting fine. <laughs> but the time I was away, now everything was getting fine, man. I left my on my and one. Yeah, man. All right, so how are we gonna do that part? The that's what the I'm trying to figure out. Right. on the limbic system as I have been yeah, for the past two and a half years. It's not completely three. If we don't make this deadline, it won't be out until the third year mark, which it'll be around September. So we slated it for May. No later than May 15th, hopefully. But if not, then who cares? Bruh, that shit is like... Yeah, because with the way Frank Ocean, he did it over a good amount of bars. Like, it wasn't just like... And with this, you just really got to experiment. You just got to let go, bro. Yeah. Don't mean your head so much. Just let this shit go. All right. Oh my gosh, what is she talking about? Man. So do it at the beginning? It would be beginning, or it would be one at the beginning, and one then uh, where it's supposed to be, and, and then one the end. after. That's how it's gonna be. Let's keep stacking. Yeah. Oh wait, is that shit even going? I'm all the way in California. That would be. Exactly. Enjoy everything that I hear. Stacy and Joy is everything that I do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Ready? Ready? Any? So yeah. Oh, yeah, first part. I'm just gonna pay in this kind of matter. Tesla, ride out on a matter. Tesla, I'm out for my battle. You bad one, bad one, no tragic. Y'all the tragic. This shit just, this shit tragic. This shit tragic. No hands, I'm bad. Tesla, I'm bad. Uh 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 uh. I cannot find a flow. I had it. I had it once upon a time ago. No, no. Yeah. But I mean love. Yeah, you just see the drugs. It's the drugs that got us up. Just let me for it. You just let me do it for the drugs. I say fuck it, it's just love. You should just let me for the love. The fuck the cloud. I just need the love. The yeah. You should just fuck me for the drugs. You should just fuck me for the. You should just fuck me for the love. Put the cloud. Yeah, I just need the love. First thing is that I listen for our melodies. Um, especially if I'm listening to something for sample potential. Um, I'm listening for something that I can flip immediately. If I'm just listening to new music. I always listen to the track first. I guess that's just me being a producer. Then lyrics and everything else follows. But I don't know. Yeah, probably just melodies. I think melodies is the best answer for that one. as a producer or do you want to just play the background role because there's right. plenty of people playing the background role but the people that we know and you know about up front are the people that are making that effort to be up front and right. be that artist that they know like you said cash money ap everybody know about metro right now yeah. everybody know about Take sunny take keith everybody know about all of these people uh, who else is putting out projects uh kate is putting out projects sure. as himself and I mean, I'm even running behind that wave now. Like, I got my own projects that are coming out as myself featuring these artists because it's direct thoughts that are coming from myself. Dog, I think that's like... It's all about what you want. And there's a difference between a producer and a beat maker. Exactly. Because yeah. yeah. you can be a producer and don't touch no music. Literally, Facts. don't touch nothing. Mm. Like, for instance, there's been it's been said that in, in writing that George uh, uh, Clinton, he didn't, he didn't do anything. Like he didn't play any instruments, hmm. but he was listed as EP, executive producer over all of Parliament, Funkadelic, all of that stuff right there. Interesting. And he, what y'all know about that? He wouldn't even write music. You know what I'm saying? But it's like it's getting here. people to do certain things in certain places to make things work together. Uh, time is the biggest sacrifice that. I feel like any artist has to make, whether it be a sacrifice to make your dream come true, or it's a sacrifice on your dream's behalf in order to keep life moving. So honestly, I think time is the biggest sacrifice that I've made either in regards to me progressing or me being stagnant. It just depends on which way you look at it. Which one? When my mom's trying to pull up, it was aneurysm. On October 10th, 1998, he would just branch me wherever I was at. It's so, so much of it. And uh, what I remember is that my mother, who had passed away three and a half years ago. That's the legend right there. Check those, nigga.
This is a good question. Um, <laughs> me and Ned met in 2016. Uh, mutual friend, my, my, my childhood best friend, Michael Williams, who is also an artist, and look out for his project. It's coming soon, too. He used to go by J-Quiz. I used to call him j Quizzle. He hated that, but it's hilarious to me. Um, we were working an event with him, um, or for him. Um, I was his DJ for this event called Black to Hip Hop. I'm generally his DJ for anything like major that he performs at. And I did his set. Like I mixed it in like Ables and stuff. They like the transitions and all that stuff. I helped with the lights and whatever. We were working this, working the Black to Hip Hop event and we met up at his house um, to rehearse for the event. And um, from there, we just, that was our first initial meeting and, and we performed that night, but we had a little mishaps. Uh, my, um, my flash drive got lost in the midst of performing um, or not performing, uh, getting ready for the performance that night. Um, I had the flash drive for the session. Uh, I think I think it was I think it was Trey flash drive or something like that because he was DJing. Yeah, so I had Trey flash drive and I lost it. We had a flawless run through for sound check and everything of that nature, and then Showtime came and we had to turn in our flash drives to I believe the sound guy that had our sets on uh, just to make sure everything was running smoothly, and somehow. The flash drive got misplaced that had the set that we was running that night on it. And we was like flashlights in the venue looking around trying to find it, couldn't find it. Uh, we all started panicking because we didn't know what he was going to do. But Ned had a hard drive back at his place. So I'm just like, damn, person I am, like, yo, if I fuck up on anything, yo, I got to find a way to fix it. So, well, I went to go fix it, drove back to the crib, re download the session, gave this man a whole new hard drive. And he went and copied the set on there and brought it back. Um, he felt bad because I lost a, a bunch of beats that I had on on that heart, on that flash drive. But I mean, in my opinion, he made up for it. He gave me that, gave me Ableton. And the next day he gave me Ableton. And from there, we just started hanging out. I think, well, he found out I made beats. Well, he knew I made beats and I seen that he made beats and we just linked up one day. Yeah. And making music and formulating plans together. Ended up making modal vibes together. Uh, we was like trying to figure out like how we want to go about it. Like my plan was I'd be the engineer, he'd be the producer, I'd produce here and there. I didn't really want to rap, I just wanted to see if I could help like a Greensboro artist like blow up. You know, that was like my whole thing. And we had like a mindset on how we wanted to make the songs and whatnot and the structures. Like, yo, we make a song like this. Yo, we gonna get Benzo to do this or, you know, Mac to do this and it's gonna come out like this. Ain't really worked like we wanted to. <laughs> no offense to any of them guys, but it just didn't. And I think the turning point was when Trey made No Love and I did that whole song and it did so well. And I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna rap because honestly, that's kind of my whole point investing in the studio in the first place. So from there, I think Motor Vibes already started. Um, we ended up thinking of the names, going through the dictionary online, looking up things that describes our sound. It's all about that vibe and feeling. So we went from there, uh, drop brand on logo me on Twitter and it was like, I bet we have business now. Yeah, we just, from that point, it was just history made, man. Like him and me, we got along, no problems. Him and Stacy already knew each other uh, just from being around Greensboro and running similar circles. And um, Daniela and Stacy hit it off. We ended up becoming godparents of, of little Alex around that time and everything was just going good you know what I'm saying so that's how me and them met up and he's always been in my corner since that's the home <laughs> Oh man, Zip. 
Park Pool, 23. I met Malik. Uh, what year was that? It was 2011 when I moved to Greenwich, bro. I met this nigga Trey. He lived the house down from me. Niggas was outside hooping all the time. Me, my brother, and uh, my homeboy Marcus. We was outside playing basketball like we usually do after school. Um, Malik was on the late bus coming home. And he got off the bus. I didn't hoop. So a nigga saw me get off the bus one day. He was like, oh, this look like a nigga we can fuck up real quick. Then I went outside, got fucked up. Ever since then, that's been my nigga for life. You hear me, you funky cop, bitch. Yeah, from that point on, we started kicking it. Uh, I started doing music, like I said, around 2014. Um, my senior year of, of high school. And I think he started doing it around that same time, 2014, maybe 2015. And then, you know what I'm saying? When it came to the music 2014, he was doing his production, uh, Mars Flowers, as they called him. And then I seen this nigga eating real good over there. I was mad. I was like, damn, I want some of this shine too, my nigga. So then I was like, fuck it, I'm finna start rapping. I dropped a little freestyle to the, uh, what's the nigga name? Young Lean, Young Lean beat. You know what I'm saying? That nigga, he took the same beat. Diss me on it. Everybody in high school was they were they was cracking on me like nigga you got cooked up. I was like, all right, from this day forward, I'm never gonna get cooked again. So I started taking music seriously. Uh, 2015, I dropped the album called Brown with my uh, this girl. She had fucked my whole mental up. Know what I'm saying? But that's a story for another day. Then he was putting out. I know he's putting out projects by 2015. Um. And he would always just hit me up for music advice or me to at least listen to it. And he was always talking about working together. And I was just like, in due time, basically, I wanted to grow. I wanted him to grow. And once I felt like we was both at the right level, we just decided to start working on stuff. We, we about two years down the road, I drop a manual and that's the first project Trey was like, damn, I really see the potential of what you doing right here. So I was like, damn, thank you, my nigga. He was like, look, you can come fuck with us over here now. I'll make some beats for you. And I was working on a project called Be Home Soon. That's what Stacy was on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we put Stacy on that. That's the first time, you know what I'm saying? Trey was involved in me making an album. So that was around 2016, 2017. It's 2016. Because we started working on some uh some rough demos for what was gonna be my album then or what my album was gonna sound like then and i went out to colorado this nigga was sending me beats when i was out there and then i came home and then we started working on the limbic system <laughs> you bitch <laughs> easy nigga i'm done Take me off camera, I ain't doing this shit no more. <laughs> yeah, that's how we met. Man, he been my brother ever since that, that day. And niggas was dunking on each other. Well, I was dunking on him. He ain't dunk on me. I think I want to hear some rap. That verse a bit. Not more so melody. Mm -hmm. I like the melody on the, uh, the chorus. On the, yeah, on the other track. Right, right. Wait, second one? The second track, I like the way you, when you did it that one too. Definitely gotta go back though. I'm not feeling the bounce. Damon, I met Damon in 2016. That's when him and Ned were working together on some some music around that time. That's around the first time when I was work first started meeting Ned and, and started working with Ned. So I went over to his to his house to Ned's house. And Damon was in there recording, and that's that's our first run in. And then I want to say about a year and a half later or so, came over to your crib and saw him there. I was like, "Yo, I ain't seen this nigga in like a year and a half, two years. Like, what, what where you been at?" And he was still doing the music thing, and y'all was already, you know, linking up on on video plans and stuff of that nature. So. We just got right back to it and finally started making some music together, so. So it's gonna be four. It's gonna be four? Yeah. 
That's what it is. Well, no, it's gonna be three, but I think then a half. So how many? The D tune or whatever. I think the reception is gonna be, be pretty great. Um, I'm not really aiming at one one genre, one crowd, you know what I'm saying? So I think the reception is gonna be cool. Um, overall feeling about the album being released or finally getting it out. It's just a weight lifted because I've gone through a lot over this time period. I've grown a lot. There's been a lot of learning moments and teaching or teaching moments a lot of lessons that i've learned just in life alone and it'll be represented through music i mean i'm giving the opportunity to to some homies to just get things off their chest i want everything to be emotional this whole project process has been super emotional dog like you know what i'm saying frustration happiness excitement you know what i'm saying everything is involved in it and so you know, I just hope everybody at least receives it in that aspect. Give you something to feel hype when you want to feel hype. Give you something to chill out to when you want to chill. Give you something to be sad to if you want to be sad to it, if that's what you want to do. But uh, it's motivational music on there. Everything is everything, for real. Like, we just, we just gave it our all. So I'm excited for people to receive it. However they choose to receive it. I ain't really tripping as long as you listen. I, I know I need to get some work done. I got like, like I said, I would like to drop around like, like, like just a little over a month from now. I would no later than the 15th. I ain't going for it. Honestly, with just the songs I got, we kind of there, bro. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I feel too. At the same time, I'm like, I gotta get shit done. Like, yeah. Like, on the for real? I still got to do. And I still got to figure out the names. Yeah, but still. Just like, even just my, just my tracks alone, I just yeah. feel like they're there. Like, that Malik's could be too. Yeah, but he just got to bring his ass here and, you know, clock in. You know, clock in. Yo, stop bullshitting. Free the limbic system. <laughs> That's going to be a commercial. We need that. Somebody Malik got me in a 360. He always talking about how he in death row. Nigga. Right. This death row, I'm Dre. I'm about to get out and I'm about to go make <laughs> aftermath, nigga. <laughs> um, patience is the first thing. Being patient in life, period, is gonna take you a long way. And with your music, it'll help you even more. Just because you gotta understand that it is always going to be a learning process. There's something that you can always learn from someone, from somewhere, from something. So as long as you got that attitude and you can stay patient with it, then you are gonna be just fine. Um, if I had to put like a one B, it would probably be don't, don't be comparing yourself to other people. Um, big in art and, and, and music, I feel like it becomes too competitive and the only person that we competing with is ourselves on this music shit, my nigga. Like, if I'm too busy out here trying to beat the next nigga, I'm gonna end up sounding like the next nigga. And I ain't got time for it. I'm trying to be me. I'm trying to sound like me, so I'm competing with me. I take inspiration from other people, and I learn tools, tricks, and trades from other people. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna use it for me. So, that's one and one B. Two, uh... I don't know, man. Just love the music, and the music is gonna love you back. <laughs> uh, and three. Fuck it. I don't have a third one. I really don't have three for these niggas, man. I just feel like those first two is all you need to do as far as this music shit goes. It's all uh, be a student. Three is be a student. Everybody knows you need to be a student. You gotta be a student of what you say you love. If, you, if you're not willing to continue to learn, like I said in the first part, then your ass gonna be stagnant and then you're gonna be washed. And if you washed, well, that's on you. So, one, two, three. Well, I gave niggas four, because I said one, one, <laughs> one B, then I said, then I said two, then I said three. So, nigga, I gave it to y'all SAT style. Niggas can't say that I ain't give, I ain't never dropped nothing to them. I usually don't talk to niggas, because niggas don't listen. They hear what they want to hear. 
and then they interpret it the way they want to interpret it. And then you start making inferences. I don't have time for inferences. I said what I said, and that's what it's going to be. So. What's up? This is going to be a problem. Nigga, you sound like Mike Epps on Friday afternoon. No, no. See, you trying to hold me, nigga. Ain't nobody holding you, dog. I got something for that. Yeah, well, you going to start fucking me when we 40. <laughs> <laughs> I want the same treatment this nigga got. Okay. Oh damn, I'm in Trey Wood, 2000. Come on, Come on no, my nigga. Intercept, because you intercepted my voice. And then I only need your voice. Okay? Do it again. So how did you meet Trey? And how did y'all get together on this music shit? 2012, I was in sixth grade, you feel me? But I ain't know that. nobody. I was, I was fresh off, I was fresh off the boat. Come on, start off. Come on my nigga. <laughs> Make sure you look at that camera, please. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So, uh, how did you meet Trey? Nigga! Woo! How did you, how did you meet Trey? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sorry. My bad. That nigga was about to play him zip, though. Alright. Woo! Alright, so, how did you meet Trey? And how did y'all get together on this music shit? 2011, I was a sixth grader at Northern Guilford Middle School. Lake Shore, come on, my nigga, why is she playing with me, bro? Come on, Z, it's this nigga. Hold on, man. That's my fault, bro. I was laughing the way you was talking. I was my professional, dude. That's how I be in the interviews for jobs. We rockin' Fubu suits all 2019. Give me everything that I got right now. If it weren't for them two niggas, I'd probably be somewhere fucked off, uh, getting hold by niggas. Talking about, oh, nigga, let me get, <laughs> let me get a burst, nigga. We don't, we don't get burst, nigga. It ain't nothing free over here, nigga. We eat. This time was TV, bitch. And please watch the commercials. We'll be back right after these messages, nigga. <laughs> 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 Come on.